It's December 10th, 2014. Uh, I'm here with Sally again. Um, she's on her way back to the UK and she's just uh, about to finish her last dose of uh, Nucogen um, uh, post therapy, post bone marrow aspiration. And so we just wanted to summarize all the effects, good, bad, and different that have happened um, since we started this. So first of all, the tinnitus, the ringing in your ears, How? what is the difference be before and after? Well, I can ignore it now. My you can ignore it. I can it. ignore it, even though it's present there all the time. Mm -hmm. um, whereas before, I couldn't really ignore it. Okay, and, and you said before it was pulsatile on the left side. Yeah. And it was loud. Yeah. And now it's quieter, and it's more of a hiss toward the right side. Yeah. It's very odd, but okay, that's good. Um, and then, I think, I guess our, our biggest success is the headache. Yeah. And so the headache is, is, is gone, except if you do something that would basically give anybody a headache, like staying up too late or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that so that much is really good. And then your <clears throat> your spatial steadiness, like the world seesawing back and forth when you're walking, what's the level of that? Um, it's much less than it was. Um, the world seems much more stable, but it's not completely better. It's not completely better. Okay. No. So we, but we made a significant improvement yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so that's that's all the good news. I think, um, I think it's also good that maybe as a result of some of this, you're not having the panic attacks literally every other day. Mm. Um, so your emotional stability does seem better. Yeah. Which all else being equal is obviously a good thing. Um, the negatives obviously goes without saying that, you know, paying tens of thousands of dollars and too much of your time to do all this is is obviously in itself a negative. Nothing you can do about that. Um, but then as far as your energy level, you're saying you're more fatigued now than when you first showed up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And and we think that's due to bone marrow replication stress. In other words, that you're having to replicate all of these stem cells that you've, you've stolen out of your bone marrow, and that just takes a lot of resources. And um, that, combined with some of the powerful antibiotics you're on, um, might, be, might be contributing to that. There could also be a thyroid role, but I think that's probably secondary. Um, do you have any other ideas for why you're fatigued? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, and I will say it is obvious to me that yes, you are fatigued and your energy level has been rather rather mm -hmm. low. Um, hopefully, you're eating a bit more vegetables now, so yeah, that should help. Um, yeah. I mean, one of the reasons I might be fatigued is that I've been fighting this thing really, really hard, and I've suddenly got a, a minor relief from symptoms, and. Mm. Um, it might be that my body just sort of wants to collapse because you know it's just been fighting so hard and it. Can oh, and it just finally got it finally yeah. got a break, and so it wants to yeah. chill out. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's logical. Um, now you were saying um, we were seeing pretty significant improvements with your olfactory function, mm. and then that seems to have mitigated kind of back to baseline. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I, I would interject that because of your stem cell diet, you've decided to stop eating chocolate because of the caffeine content. Yeah. And, and there's, some, there's some reasonable theory behind that. But, but I think the key to olfactory recovery, apart from stem cells, is C60 in combination with chocolate. So now you're still taking C60, but you haven't taken chocolate in a couple of weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So how much C60 are you taking? Two teaspoons a day? Yeah. Okay. So about six milligrams or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and any, is there, oh, well, it, cognitively, so we still have this sort of small improvement that we can see in your game and it's not really clear, but, but basically the cognitive is, is not clinically significant at this point. In no. time. Okay. So that, that's kind of a neutral column. Hopefully, um, you know, given, given that I think we've, we've shown that we've improved stuff, um, vascularly based on, you know, your, your other brain improvements. Um, that we can then build on that vasculature and improve your white matter health. Um, but that's, that's going to be a, you know, a supplement battle and maybe to some extent a low level light therapy battle you're going to have to fight uh, back in the UK. Mm. Um, so we did not retest Lyme and in I guess a few days or maybe next week when the blood tests come out I'll share those on the thread so people can see that. Um, but. Um, I guess I guess that's kind of it. You fought extremely hard, and you, you've been, um, I'd say, moderately successful thus far. But you know, this is not a panacea, and it's not an overnight cure, and it's never going to fix everything. So, how do you how do you feel about the whole thing? 
Um, well, if I think about it, I suppose I'd be quite worried about it, really. But I'm, I'm still living one day at a time. And I think that's the only thing to do. The, the only way to cope with a situation like this. I, I think I think that's probably generally good advice anyway. Um, if if you had seen all of your blood tests and all of your videos and everything before you showed up over here, what, what would you do differently, if anything? If you knew, in other words, if you knew exactly what was going to happen, what would you do mm, differently, I'm if anything? I would start to um, correct my diet before the stem cells. Yeah, that's a good thought. Yeah, so that um, I'd be used to a really strict diet and I wouldn't make some of the sort of mistakes that I have been making. So you wouldn't, in other words, it wouldn't be a shock to you to change the diet. So you'd, you'd, you'd get that done maybe a month before. Yeah. Or I, ideally, you just have eaten healthy for many yeah. years, but at least. And I, I'd advise that for, for anybody who's thinking of taking stem cell therapy for whatever reason, you know, make sure that you're eating properly beforehand, and then it'll be much easier afterwards. That makes a lot of sense, especially because it often takes several weeks to a month or two to get therapy just because of the logistics. And so while you're waiting for it, change your diet instead of waiting until you've had the stress of therapy and then you're going to put the stress of diet change on top of that. So I think that's really good advice. Um, anything else you want to say before I get one final heel toe walk out of you? Uh, no, not really. Okay, well, um, okay. I guess let's go for it. Mm. Follow that crack as usual. I'll do your best. Don't worry about it. Just do what you can. Go ahead. That's all right. No, I don't know. It's showing up getting slightly worse again. I, know, I thought that was pretty good. But no, because before I could make it right the way across. Very close. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add? No, not really. All right. Best of luck back in the UK, and hopefully you'll send some more videos, but uh, we're not sure whether you're going to be able to do that. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah, all right. I'll we'll just see how it goes, I guess. All right, then. Okay. Wave goodbye. Okay, bye.